Hey guys, it's Alexis Wolf. We're back in my book, Looking for God, Volume 2. We are in Chapter 2, Reaping What We Sow. So this will be Part 1. Galatians 6, verses 7 through 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows into his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. In this chapter, I'm going to be very, very candid about my life and how God continues to reveal how all this sowing and reaping works. <clears throat> one day, I was sitting at the Daven on the Davenport with my daughter, wishing my husband of several years did not have such a grueling work schedule. I hated he had to work six days a week and many times 12 to 14 hours a day. I had gotten off the phone with a friend of mine about a half hour prior. We had been talking in general about people we know and how frustrating it is they cannot understand that what they sow now, they will reap in their future. I express my dismay that I can't seem to get through to some people that the more they continue in their path of sin, the harder it will be for them once they get aligned in obedience with God. Suddenly it occurred to me, I am reaping what I sowed so long ago. Ugh, send shivers down my spine even now, and I wrote this a long time ago. Although it was not a shock, it kind of was. I have paid a hefty price in many ways for my sinful past, yet this seemed to reveal a much deeper level of reaping. I know part of my husband's work hours is because God is working on him. However, I realized in that instant, because I had spent so much intimate time with him years ago when he was not my husband, and while I was legally married to another, albeit separated, another husband, I am now harvesting that unfinished field of sin. Harsh reality. The price for that stolen time is being paid current day. Everything has a price tag and nothing is free. Even Jesus' gift of free salvation wasn't free to him. It isn't God's punishment. It's just God's law in motion. And we talked about in the last book. That was an unpleasant realization, yet it was without guilt or condemnation. I had long since repented, so that was not the issue. The issue was that I needed to understand this situation would not change until the harvest of bad seed was completed. Frankly, I don't know God's timing on this matter. I do know that as I continue to sow good seed during the finishing of this bad harvest, the bad will end. Thank you, Jesus. That's a big fat thank you, Jesus. A family member is another part of my previously planted seed of sin. This person cannot get past the way they saw me live my life many years ago. This person is unrelenting in animosity toward me no matter how I live my life today. This has bothered me for years, but once I began to understand all this planting and reaping, peace and pure love began to overtake me. I understand that, though their attitude against me is unwarranted in the natural, in the spiritual, I planted poorly in my past. Therefore, this is part of my reaping the harvest of a bad seed. Next subtopic is accountability. With all this understanding of sowing and reaping, accountability belongs to me personally. With accountability, I can continue to walk in peace instead of constant anger and unforgiveness Regardless of someone else's bitterness, I can love them as unto God, as the word tells us to do, as opposed to unto them, which is impossible in the flesh. The only way to love the unlovely, those who hate and mistreat us, is to do it unto God. This way, God is responsible for the rendering payment instead of the person or for rendering the payment instead of the person. Though I do not like their conduct against me, I can take responsibility in the situation and quickly be forgiving toward them. Now the control over my own life belongs to me and not to them. As I stated previously, understanding brings greater ability and desire to do as God commands, which is to love our neighbor as ourselves and bless those who curse us. My reason for sharing this is to help us wake up and stop sinning as soon as possible. 
not because I am condemning anyone, but because I want the best for people's lives, as does Yeshua. He set the law of sowing and reaping in motion, and it cannot be changed. This is why he can't just swoop in, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> he can't just swoop in, making all of our problems go away the moment we confess and repent. It is in no way a lack of love or power on his part. In fact, because of God's immeasurable love, he repeatedly tells us in his word to stop our sinful ways, confess and repent so that he may make us whole as soon as possible. Please know that making us whole is instantaneous in his sight. The wholeness is his son's infilling of those who receive. Only Christ is the perfection of wholeness. Unfortunately, there is still a mess we have that we have made for ourselves that requires time to clean in the natural. The more we extend our sinning in full consciousness, the larger our negative harvest will become and the longer it will take to plow through it. <clears throat> repeating is totally, or I'm sorry, repenting is totally for our benefit. When we grasp a mental image of the intensity of the measure of planting sin into the earth, I pray we will not hesitate to stop abruptly. Look at Elijah. He is the greatest prophet ever. When he sinned by rising up in pride in front of Jezebel, by concocting an elaborate performance to, of God's power, he not only turned and ran for his life, begging God to kill him, but his life on earth was in fact shortened. God instructed Elijah to train Elisha so as to take over his duties. Forever blessed by God and highly exalted, yes, Yet he still had to deal with the consequences of his actions. There is always a price to pay for sin, though forgiven. Ultimately, God is still blessing Elijah today. He, yet he simply missed out on much of what God had for him here on earth. Likewise, we too will miss out on what God has for and through us in this life due to blatant disobedience regardless of what excuse we may present. As a son of God, we will be blessed in heaven, but why would we purpose to miss out on what the Lord has for us here on earth? It really doesn't make sense when you put it in such a light. Look at Apostle Paul. Everyone uses him to cop out when tribulations come their way. They say that Paul was the greatest of the apostles, yet he suffered the most. He had a thorn in his side and asked God three times to remove it. We're all familiar with that story. That thorn, many times was people who tormented and mocked him in his ministry. This quote-unquote thorn kept him humble, but that is not the context of this discussion. Paul suffered greatly during his ministry. This is not solely because of the good seed he sold along the way, but the bad he had previously sown. God did not remove the repercussions of his past wickedness the moment the anointing rained upon him. Paul, though forgiven and greatly anointed, never stopped reaping the massive field of wickedness. Of course, he was still blessed and highly favored because of the good seed he sowed post-transformation, but he simply could not completely get away from the seed he spent years planting when he was working against God's people. And now we're going to look at another couple passages, but we'll save that for the next video. I hope this makes sense. And if you want to read along, a friend of mine is like, oh, I just want to read along. Get the book, Looking for God, Volume 2, Volume 1, and Volume 3. They're all, they're all on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. Father, we just bless you. We thank you, Almighty God. Help us to understand planting and reaping what we have sown. Father, we thank you, Almighty God, that there's nothing that you have left uh, unrevealed to us, but if we would only get into your word and ask your spirit to show us what's happening in a certain situation. Father, I pray that we will not shirk from being obedient to you, Father, that we, but that we will be obedient for our own good so that you may bless us, so that we may bless you, so that we can be um, expanders of your kingdom here in this earth. Father God, show us what obedience looks like and show us what humility looks like so that we can finish out that bad harvest without feeling like we're going to die before we get to the end. Father, we love you. We thank you, Almighty God, for your great patience and love toward us. Amen. Be blessed.